More shotguns. Doom 2016. This shotgun was a surprise star of the show considering where Doom 3 left off. It's just so damn good blowing demons away with this thing. Demonic presence at time safe mode. The look, feel, sound and impact are immensely satisfying. Each part working in glorious flesh ripping harmony. They really raised the bar for shotgun weapon design here. It's fun enough in its most basic incarnation, but just when you start to wonder what other weapons are coming your way, you get to choose one of two available mod attachments to mix things up. The alt fire modes are simple, triple shot burst or grenade round, using only the finest nanotech trickery to turn your shells into lobbed explosives. Each are interchangeable when you want, which is a great touch, no locked out upgrade path here. The shot spread, speed, pellets, visibility, enemy hit feedback are all perfectly crafted to make each hit so meaty it should be on the specials board down at your local pub. I try not to say that overused descriptor, meaty, but it seems so suitable here, what with the liberal amounts of jibbing going on. Enemies are animated to a world-class level with good use of properly weighted ragdolls as well as sublime stagger and flinch animations. I would have liked to have seen a few bespoke death cycles scattered in there too before the ragdolls take over to really show off their character in their final moments. Well-made particle effects add more layers to the gore here too, and that muzzle flash, it must be the greatest one ever made so far. Just look at that beauty. This shotgun really is the full package, solid 10 out of 10. The last game to feature two 10 out of 10 shotguns was way back in 1998 with Turok 2 Seeds of Evil on the N64. Well, we now have our second entry into this Hall of Fame. While the combat shotgun is the more tactical and dynamic weapon, this double barrel represents the other side of the gunplay spectrum, sheer brute force and nothing else, and it's glorious. Once again, the model looks fantastic and is posed on screen perfectly, so, so much better than Doom 3's more cumbersome effort. This weapon would only ever work in a game like this where the objective is to rip through as much demon flesh as possible, and most likely from point blank position to drench yourself in their vile fluids. Bam! Bam! Who's next? You'll become an ultimate badass with this thing, leveled up to its maximum double shot and penetration rounds. But even in its stock form, you get such a buzz from its sharp, determined shot and resultant mess made from whatever fully deserving hellish recipient on the other side of the barrel. I'm also pleased to see the zoomed aiming for this weapon was not down its iron sights. The devs know this gun is best fired from the hip. By keeping it there, you still have that wider field of view and spatial awareness allowing you to keep moving and manoeuvre towards your next target, leaving the quick scoping to sniper types. If there has to be one criticism aimed at both of the shotguns in Doom then, as a petty complaint, would be that the excellent wall decals fade away very quickly. Let's have them stay next time, eh? I want to look back in the room and see how much it's been chewed up. That goes for enemy corpses too. But there's no denying, the masters of the genre are back on top from this point forward. That name, Super Shotgun, it's earned it.
Home Front, The Revolution. This is an interesting one. It's got great punch to it, and the way enemies go down reminds me a lot of Half-Life 2, which is not a huge compliment in this case, as they just crumple to the floor quickly. No animations, no character, just bags of sand stitched together. But at least it's nice to have some weightiness to killing armoured troopers. There are some stagger animations in there too, it's not much to shout about though, as most of the time i found they go down in one hit, unless you're at a longer distance. So a little more work on expressive impacts and reactions of the enemies when facing up against this shotgun would be a big critique here, because everything else is top notch. The modelling work is excellent, something you will appreciate when switching fire modes with very well done animations. You get two major modifications, a fully auto mod that does a very good job of chewing up everything in front of you. Exactly what an auto shotgun should do. Good work, Brady. And an inferno launcher modification, which is basically a three round Molotov cocktail launcher. You'll see the results are pleasing on the eye, and a real riot starter. The Cry engine certainly works wonders for developers and their weapon designs. We have an excellent shotgun here with neat modifications. While a bit clunky to select mid-firefight, they are exceptionally executed. Just need a bit more out of the enemies to make the perfect shotgun experience, as shooting armor-clad sandbags for hours does get a bit boring. Well worth a look in any case. Intrude. I was recommended this game by a friend when it launched and I was hooked immediately. Played right to the end in two sittings. Here it's 24 years after the original Wolfenstein 3D and this is the first indie game that perfectly captures the core gameplay of the era. This is FPS gunplay boiled down to its elements. The first thing you'll notice are that weapons feel weighty in this game, which is quite an achievement given the limitations of the pixel art style. This is achieved with some nice subtle camera shake, well-timed gun recoil, neat little muzzle flare and a decent shot sound. The shotgun has this thump to it and feels solid. Enemies flinch for exactly the right amount of time for a simple game like this, allowing you to get your shot in and take cover from return fire, if any. The audio and visual feedback of hitting enemies feels so satisfying. <laughs> Speed you move at is pacey enough for the combat with the shotgun to work well. Any faster and it's an ice rink, any slower and you'll be grinding your teeth. With the art style, there's a lack of modern effects like environmental decals, ricochet particle effects, and also no alternate fire mode, which they could have considered. But my word, for a 2D shooter sticking to THE original formula, it's sublime. Fans of FPS games should have this in their library as a reminder of how far we've come and how far we didn't need to move at all. please consider supporting on Patreon. Mmm, I love it!